some websites, some apps just give you anxiety. Why? That's the question we're going to break down today. Now, this website we're going to break down, it's one of my buddy's websites. And they make a lot of great sales on the e-commerce platforms. But they have neglected making their website as good as they can. The focus of this video, we're going to learn some basic UI UX design concepts. You've probably seen them on TikTok and Instagram. They're very popular. Now, this is your standard website, right? You got different sections. You got intros. You got pictures. You got contact information. And of course, you could navigate the site to its various sections. So today, what we're going to do is we're just going to look at this home page. Maybe in the future, we will look at all these sections. But as of today, we are just going to look at the home page. So let's go back to the home page. And this will be the focus. So the first concept we're going to explore is called responsiveness. Responsiveness is how how your site looks no matter what size you're viewing on your computer or what device you're viewing this is the website as it looks from my screen now some people it might be more zoomed out like this some people it might be more zoomed in one of the quickest ways to test responsiveness is to start shrinking your screen if you start shrinking your screen you will start seeing how the different boxes the different elements move so look what happens when i start shrinking when I start moving my browser, things start moving, things start moving. Now look up here. It's already getting very, very, very crowded. Look at this. They're almost kissing. So this, look at that. They touch. They actually touch. You see that? The boxes actually overlap now. That is just anxiety inducing. See, basically what's going on here is there's some condition that's not set right where it should become like this way before but it's not also if you notice shop nutrient facts two of them appear where did the other ones go so in general if you want to test responsiveness this is a good way to test whoa whoa you see that see that there's a moment there you see this so it should have become like this around here when it starts getting really really crowded so some kind of coding that's not done right in the back end that's causing this crowding when you change the size of the browser if you open up the developer tool which i've showed you guys before you can even look at how it looks like when it's on the mobile right so this is if you look at it from your phone how it looks like but usually we test responsiveness by looking at every single potential size because sometimes as we see here it is giving us some issues. Look at the top right again, and then somehow only two of the buttons up top. Here's another example of responsiveness. There's a lot of text here, which we're gonna explore later. Check this out as we drag it. Check this out, look at this. Look at this, look at that, look at that. Suddenly, look at that. It's almost like these lines are gonna explode out. So this is another responsiveness issue. This just generates a lot of anxiety. Look at this. Look at this. Here's some videos that have shouted out my buddy's company. So imagine someone on a smaller browser. Look at this. Look at it. It just kind of jumps down. So look at this now jumps down. This one's still here. Now this one jumps down. You see? Look at that. So little things like that. It's really telling that the sirens are going on outside because it's saying, hey, 911, there's an issue here too. Look at this. As we drag, look at the social media buttons. Look at the social media buttons. Watch. Look at that. They're almost getting swallowed. And then, look at that. They're almost getting swallowed again before it becomes like this. So when you think about a website and you think about how it might appear to the user, one of the best things to do is to look at how responsive it is. The next concept we're going to look at is called typography. Typography is basically everything related to the font. Font's one of those things that a lot of people take for granted, but how you design your fonts and everything that goes with that will really mess people up or do your site a favor on a very subconscious level. So we're going to be conscious and aware of this. So in the future, we don't make these mistakes. One of the first things that jarred me, and I had to really think about it for a second before I realized what's going on. There's a mixture of sans serif and serif fonts. Now, what is the difference between sans serif and serif? Serif is basically these little curves that occur at the end of 
many words. There's many, many fonts that have variations of these curves. That's called a serif. Sans serif basically from Latin means it doesn't have the curve. So this is an example of a sans serif font. If you notice, there's no curve. It's just black, just straight. When I started looking at this site and thinking about why I was getting anxiety, one of the most important things that occurred to me was that there's multiple times when they mix sans serif and serif. All this text here is serif, if you notice the little curves right here, the little curves right up here. But right here, these buttons suddenly turn into sans serif. And then down here, all of this is in sans serif, whereas here it's in serif. Besides the fact that the mind notices consistency, whether we know it or not, more importantly, sans serif and serif, these font families evoke very different feelings and often contradictory feelings. So what I would suggest anyone watching this video, look at what sans serif and what serif does to the mind. And there are tons, tons of websites to give you if you wanted to pair different fonts together. How do you pair them together correctly? These are basic typology concepts and we can go a lot deeper, but the most important thing to learn from this is you have to be conscious of how you use and pair and combine serif for sans serif fonts. The next concept we're gonna look at is color. Color is one of those things that people start throwing to sites and take for granted also. They don't put too much thought into it. Look at your website and then look at the colors you're using. Are these colors clashing or helping, bringing out, etc.? Our buddy has this product that's mostly green and some yellow and some white and some red. And then there's this product that's pink and white and red and green. So is this color, is this color, is this helping or is this clashing? So this is a part that goes really, really deep and Artists study this for their entire lives. Some terms for people that want to explore further. Analogous colors, complementary colors, monochromatic colors. Encompassing all this is a concept called the color wheel. To understand how colors complement and don't complement each other and how they influence your psychology, you have to envision a color wheel. Two more concepts to look up yourself, triadic color palette and square color palette. So once you start looking at this, you'll start understanding consciously what colors to use. And on top of that, there's actually great websites that give you great color palettes that naturally go well together. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can look at some of these existing websites and you can see See what they do and how they do it and potentially take inspiration from this. So that's what I would suggest. Experts that have written this stuff and the stuff is available for free. If you watch previous videos, this concept you've probably heard, which is the reducing of the number of alignment points. Now alignment's one of those things, if you're not conscious of it, you don't know that it's affecting you. But once you become aware of it, you realize, wow, this messes up my eyes. It messes up my brain's processing of the site. So let's look more at alignment. This line of text, it just seems to be hovering. It's not aligned with this. It's not aligned with this. These three levels of text layers with their different alignment immediately attract the incorrect attention. It's not, look at me, it's, hey, is there something wrong here? So I just turned on what's called pesticide so you guys can see even more. The goal when you're trying to design is to limit the number of points that align. There's an alignment point here there's an alignment point here and there's an alignment point here. And we can actually take this tool and draw it. You see that? So we have three alignment points here. Your mind doesn't do the math like this, but your mind knows there's just something off. Here's another example. So this box up top here, this is probably center aligned, but now there's an alignment point here that mismatches the edge of the box here. So there's too many alignment points here. Same with here, if you notice, this text, you see the box? This text just slightly misaligns. So there's a point here, there's a point here, there's also a point here, and there's a point here. It's a lot of alignment points. Same thing if you look horizontally here. So this picture has an alignment point here. The text starts below it. So here, the alignment's off. You can even look here at the edge of the picture doesn't align with this picture. It doesn't align with this box. It's just a lot for the mind to process. And then here, look at this. 
this is center aligned, but then this is left aligned. There's a lack of consistency because if we look above, this was center aligned and this is center aligned. But here suddenly this became left aligned. Here's another example. Notice there's an alignment point here, but then there's an alignment point here. Two alignment points, it's not necessary. So one thing you can always do is you can always just play around. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm playing around with alignment points. So check out, now we aligned them. So then we will go here. You guys also have way too many boxes. You see, it doesn't make sense until you see it. You see how much more orderly it looks? Now, again, I just did this on the spot, so maybe I got some of the alignment wrong. I don't know. Compare this to before. You see this? There's just a little bit jarringness. You don't have to make the mind do that extra processing. It's another perfect example. So I'm going to go here. It's probably around 50. I think that's about right. I'm going to align it with that. And then, does that align this? These two aren't aligned, right? So we're gonna have to push this one up. Probably looks about right. Maybe it needs a little more. Also, these are two different font sizes. The point is the more you reduce number of little bits of alignment that the mind has to process, the less anxiety it gives you. So the last section we're gonna look at is called spacing. Now this is different from spacing when it comes to typology. This is more the general layout of the website. We're gonna think and look at what I call negative space or white space. Basically, these are spaces and moments of rest on a website so it doesn't look too crowded. You don't wanna over flood people with information. So you gotta give your viewers room to breathe. If you don't do it right, you'll quickly give anxiety to your viewers. One of the first things is there's just too much going on. There's too much going on. Not enough negative or white space, basically places where there's nothing going on so they know what to focus on. Besides that, think about line length. Now this might be more of a typology thing. Is this too much text for what the mind can handle the first time coming here? This alignment point's also different too. I just realized that. You see this? This alignment point's also different. Wow. That's also anxiety induced. So not only is there too much going on here, but the alignment's also off. Not just about the sections, the spacing between sections, but within a section. How much space? How do you break down the text? What features do you include? What features don't you include? Is this too much? In general, you don't want there to be too many characters per line. Now I counted this, this is about 40 characters. Assuming this is all aligned in the future, one line should probably have like 40 to 60 characters. This is almost triple the number of characters that the mind can really handle in one line here too. I get it, this is an information dense section, but it's too much text. On top of that, the uneven spacing here, look at here. So these things psychologically affect the viewer who will get intimidated by the disorganization. Here's another example. This is an important section, right? These are testimonials. Why is there so little space here? Such an important section. By the lack of negative space, you're giving it less significance. You're telling people, look, this might be more important. Oh wait, this section might be more important. What about this section? This section can be organized better. There's too much text again. Too much text in one section. We can do the same amount of analysis on pictures too. Are these pictures clashing with the rest of the color scheme? Should there be more spaces between the pictures? The most important thing is, what do you want the viewer to focus on and how can you get them to focus? I'll give an analogous example. Look at me here. Let's say I start crowding up here. You see all this stuff? What do you focus on now? If we do this, look at all the negative space. All this is negative space around me. So what do you do? You focus on me. Look at this. What are you focusing on? You see what I'm showing you? The lack of information is as important as information that you present. So think about how you can communicate what people focus on by telling them what is there to look at and what definitely not to look at. Even this, right? People are gonna get distracted by that. So apply the same exact thing in website design. What do you want people to focus on by giving a lot of things around it to not focus on? My point in making this video is to help myself learn 
help my friends out because they've never had someone look at their site and give them some knowledge. This field, UI UX design, now you can understand why it's a field that takes years to master. Why people get paid lots of money to do this. Every single section we looked at can have hundreds of videos dedicated, it can have hundreds of hours of instruction and learning. What we touched on was the very, very basic. So what I told my buddies is, you gotta go and consult a UI UX designer as quick as possible. They will be the ones to give you advice and even better tips. And then you can figure out whether you go with a programmer or you go with whomever to fix up your site. Next time you guys look at a site and you're like, why does this site just feel off-putting? Why does it give me anxiety? Maybe some of the concepts we explored in this video will explain to you so you can consciously bring to the surface why your mind's feeling jarred. Okay, guys, thank you so much. This was really fun, and I hope we learned a thing or two. See you guys soon.